Hey guys, Private Jack here, and this is part two in my series on how to model a butterfly from scratch in Blender and get it into Source Filmmaker. So, we've got our texture set up, and we've got our reference picture set up, and now we're going to go to Blender and start modeling. Now, during this particular session, what I may do is throw some of the aspects into time lapse simply due to the fact that nobody wants to sit here for four hours and watch somebody model uh, in real time a butterfly. So let's get started and get things set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Blender. Now this is the standalone version of Blender that I downloaded from blender.org. Okay, it is exactly the same as uh, what you would get if you actually went and downloaded the Steam version. And just to prove that, we are actually going to model this butterfly in the Steam version. So as soon as I get the splash screen here, I'm going to kill this one. I'm gonna come down here and into Steam and launch the actual Blender version that is available on Steam. So away we go. Now I have a ton of pro of plugins already installed into Blender, so my screens may be a little bit different than yours, or I may have a couple of different options uh, available to me that you don't have because you're using you don't have the plugin installed. So if you find that's the case and I've done something that you can't replicate then leave a comment down in the, in the section and I'll have a look at it and let you know either how to do it uh, without using a plugin or where to get the plugin and how to install that. How's that for a deal? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up screencast keys. And to do that, I come down here. Screencast keys you might not have. <laughs> uh, this is my ability to pass on to you the various keystrokes and mouse button pushes that I'm doing. I'm going to pump that up to 80 and I'm going to pump that up to 80 and everything will be down here. So if I hit uh, the left mouse button, uh, the left mouse button will light up. If I hit the right mouse button, the right mouse button will roll, uh, light up. If I hit the middle mouse button, the middle mouse, mouse wheel will light up. If I scroll up, the top of the mouse wheel will light up. If I scroll down, the bottom of the mouse wheel will light up. Um, I'm going to delete the default cube. So to do that, I'm going to press X. And you can see I pressed X. And I'm going to click on Delete. And if I press multiples, like X, 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 it'll actually count up the multiple times that I've pressed that actual key. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to make sure that my cursor is in the center of the workspace. I'm going to do a Shift S. See that? Shift S and cursor to center. Okay, I'm currently in user pros or perspective view. I want to be in ortho mode because my backgrounds will not work in perspective mode. Okay, so I'm going to press 5 on the numpad and go into ortho mode. I'm going to press 1 on the num numpad to go into front view. And this particular model, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling it pretty much from the top view. Okay, we want things to be uh, from the top view. So I'm going to press numpad 7 and go into top view. This is front, this is rear, this is le uh, uh, right, 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 and this is left, okay? Because we're looking down on the actual uh, picture, or the actual workspace, okay? I'm going to right-click on the lamp. I'm going to hold down uh, Shift and right-click on the camera so that both are selected. I'm going to press M and I'm going to move these to the last layer so that my workspace is completely blank. So if I look down here, I can see that I've moved my camera 
onto the last layer and that last layer has objects in it. Okay, I'm going to click here to come back to my uh, first layer and this is where we're going to perform all the work. I'm currently in object mode. I've got uh, solid selected. Uh, my current uh, pivot point is set to medium point. Uh, we're going to get into using gimbals. Uh, we're going to get into actually... Uh, we'll get into it later. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to turn on background imaging. So over here in the tools uh, menu, or correction, in the transform tools menu, that's the way I refer to this, the transform tools menu, because the first option is transform. Uh, I'm going to select, uh, where is it, background, right here, background images. I'm going to click on the little arrow key to expand it, and I'm going to turn it on. Now, if you don't have this particular menu option available to you, pressing N will turn it on or off, or you should have a little plus key up here. You can pull that out and push it back in to expand or contract the menu. Over here, this is the tools menu, and to if you don't have this one showing on your screen right now, pressing T will turn it on or off. And you can also use the plus to push it in, push it out, whatever you want to do. Okay, we're going to be using a various number of tools in here. We're going to be watching this area over in here as well. And this is your outliner. These are the property panels. We'll be using various options here in the properties panel. And... Uh, we'll move on from here. So, just so that you have a reference to what I mean when I say uh, look at this, okay? So this is the transform tools menu. This is the actual tools menu because tools is the first option that is selected. Uh, this is the outliner and this is the property panel. Okay, now that we've got that set up, I've turned on my background images. I'm going to load an image. Now, if I click on add image, here it says all views. Okay, so this only works in ortho mode. And if you click on that, what you can do is you can have one image. Uh, you can all load multiple images here uh, by clicking on the add image, but you can have the, an image show up in all views. You can only have it show up only when the camera is selected, or you can have it show up left, right, back, bottom, top, that kind of thing. So um, we're going to use all views for now. We're going to lo click on open, and we're going to go to our desktop and pick up out of the butterfly folder that ping image that we created. Okay, now this is why I created it uh, so it was square. What happens, and put that actual image in the center of the texture, uh, is because that when it opens, now my center of the image is actually going to be located in the center of uh, my background images. Okay, so... Um, Hard to explain, but okay. So anyway, make a long story short, if I had not changed this to a 10 by 10 picture, okay, and I'm going to add a new image here just to show you. I'm gonna change this one to top so it only displays when I'm in top mode, okay? And I'm going to minimize that so I know what, I, what I'm working with. I'm going to change this one to bottom view so it will only display when I'm in bottom view and I'm going to open up the original ping image that we downloaded from the website. So that's still sitting on my desktop. Here it is here. I'm going to open that up 
and it doesn't look like it is any different uh, I'm still on top mode I need to go to bottom mode so control 1 will take me into back mode control 7 will take me into bottom view and here is that bottom view picture of the butterfly now it looks like it hasn't changed any right let's go into top view looks almost identical however when we get into actually texturing our butterfly for use in source filmmaker if I use that original uh, texture then things get blown all out of proportion and the thing is not to the power to yada 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 and we'll get into that when we get into texturing okay so I think maybe what we're going to do is now that we've got the background image loaded I'm going to kill off this one that's on the bottom. I'm going to expand the one that's on top view. I'm going to change that back to all views. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've rambled on about getting this background image into source or into Blender uh, so much that I've used up all my modeling time. So we'll go into modeling in the next session. So with that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.